Okay, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Victor, and I'm going to be your anchor for today's training. Uh, this is the Cisco uh, CCNA, uh, Cisco Certified uh, Network Associates. This is the level one, uh, which is introduction to networking. Uh, I'm going to be your anchor for this training. Uh, we did uh, module one, which is about uh, networking today. Where we looked at what networking is, what are the different components of a network, what are the type of networks, uh, we differentiated between LAN and WAN, and also uh, we looked at some basics of uh, having a secure network and what quality of service means, what uh, fault tolerance means within your network, um, and other factors in order to have a more reliable network. So if you've not subscribed to the channel, please do so. And today we're going to be looking at module two, basic switch and end device configuration. So we looked at uh, a majority of the components we have in our network, which is our end devices, our intermediary devices, and the media through which we can connect all of these items. Our end device is going to be all of the laptops, the PCs, the mobile phone, the IoT device, cars, and um, any item that's going to be connected uh, to my network. Then the intermediary devices are the switch, the, the routers, the access points, and all of that. Then the media is going to be how we're going to connect to this item. So we have the it can be through infrared, it can be through wireless, it can be through um, a cable, a normal ethernet cables, it can be through fiber optics, it can be through any medium. Now today we'll look at basic switch and end device configuration. So once you understand switching, what switching is, then how do we configure some of these uh, end devices? So, uh, this is what you expect for this model. Uh, we expect learners to have some new skills, understand some concepts. There are some animations, there are some videos within the Cisco LMS, the learning management system. So if you don't have access to that, you could uh, write, you could inbox. You have access to that uh, uh, for your token. Uh, you could have access to the learning management system or con consult your uh, net Arcad instructor. You're going to have access to the platform. So there are some little animations, there are some videos that can help you further uh, learn some of these concepts and uh, skills. Now, you have some check your understanding, some little quiz within the LMS and some in interactive activities. And of course, you have some packet tracer activities that you're going to be doing later on. We'll have some dedicated videos for packet tracer activities. So packet tracer is just a network simulation tool to help you better understand this concept. Then we have some hands-on, we have some class activities, and of course, there are some quiz and summary. Now, what's our goal? We want to explain the Cisco iOS, right? So that's the operating system for uh, Cisco devices. So that's how we're able to configure, we could tweak, we could uh, make changes, we could, just like every device is going to have an operating system, like you have uh, most phones, we're going to come on Android, it's going to come on iOS, small letter I, capital letter O, S. Then you have, um, uh, back some a few years ago, it used, to, it used to be Symbian, you have Java, you have some other operating systems. But for Cisco devices, you call it the iOS, so that's the operating system for Cisco. Then we look at how do we navigate through that, they will look at some configuration using the CLI. I'm going to run through the theoretical part of this module. Then in other set of videos where we'll be considering the lab, we're going to, I'm going to use an active switch or I'm going to use the packet tracer and run through most of this lab. So you know how to access the CLI, you know how to uh, configure a host device uh, with an IP address. So, the operating system, the shell, that user interface allows you just to request uh, specific tasks from the computer. So that's this guy here. Then you have the kernel that communicates between the hardware and the software. And of course you have the hardware, the physical part. So most of the times you're going to be seeing the hardware part. So the GUI or the CLI um, 
uh, you could use that to actually know what is happening uh, within your hardware. Now, for instance, for a Windows operating system, you have the GUI, you have the graphical user interface. Then for things like uh, other operating systems like Windows, like Mac OS, like Linux, like Apple, like Android, these are several operating systems. GUI can fail, it can crash, or simply does not uh, operate. For this reason, network devices are typically accessed through CLI. So, but that is for managed, uh, rather managed network devices. So network devices that you will have to uh, manage yourself, they will have to have, the way you can access them is through the CLI. Like in subsequent videos, I'm going to have a Cisco switch, I'll log into the Cisco switch and all of them is going to be through the CLI. Whereas for managed switches and routers, uh, you can access them through a GUI, something that looks like this. We're going to see that as we move on. So that's why for most Cisco devices, a lot of Cisco devices, you could access them through the CLI. For some recent ones, they also give you option to access that through the uh, GUI. Uh, so for this is GUI, uh, for Windows, for instance, if you go to CMD, you're able to now access the CLI to be able to do that. PuTTY, for instance, is what we're going to be used to tunnel into our Cisco device. So if you have to practice some of these labs physically, you should have PuTTY, you should have a switch, and so that you can run this hands-on. So uh, what's the purpose of an OS, an operating system? So it's just to enable you to do uh, most of these things in uh, a text-based uh, environment in the graphical user, uh, user interface. So this is, which is what you have here. Whereas for a CLI, it's mostly command line driven. And of course, the way you could access a Cisco switch, a Cisco device, is either through the console, then you need a, a second shell or telnet. So I'm, I'm very, very used to using this console. Uh, so you just have this console cable. Um, I think this is DB9. This should be DB9, it has nine pins. Then you have your normal Ethernet, uh, four, four pairs of cable into the Cisco device. Then this part goes to your system. Then you make sure you install PuTTY. Then you configure the port. Then uh, you, can op you can actually open it to load up the CLI. Then you can start configuring. We're going to do all of this and I will share additional guides on how to do that, how to connect to your switch. Yes, yeah, so you call them emulators. There are several of them. You have Teratem, you have PuTTY. I'm very used to PuTTY. So PuTTY can help you connect to your switch so that you can do uh, configurations on your switch. The iOS navigation, so how you navigate. So one thing you need to be aware if you are taking this Cisco CCNA one is that there are some commands that things you can do on your execution mode. Once you are connected through PuTTY via your console cable, this will load up. If it's a router, you see this prompt. If it's a switch, you see this prompt. Now, this is the execution mode. So you have limited capability. There are some things you want to do. For instance, you might want to configure this switch. You might want to rename it. You might want to create um, access control list. Uh, you might want to create VLANs. You might want to do some other configurations. Later on in the course, we're going to see what are those things I can do while I'm on the execution mode? What are those things I can do on my privilege mode? So once you get into privilege mode, right? Uh, you do conf T, configure terminal, C-O-N-F dash T, that's configure terminal, or C-O-N, or you write it in full, configure terminal. Once you write configure terminal, you move over to privilege mode. If there was a password configured on this switch or router to tell you, please, I need my password. So if you don't enter into the password, of course, you will not be, you will not have access into the privilege mode. So we're going to do most of these things and we're going to see how it goes like. I have quite a lot, a number of um, labs in this course. Um, you have, uh, Labs. So these are some of the labs you have. 
the first one, which is research IT and networking job opportunities. How do we navigate into your iOS using TerraTab? It's, it's, it's a very detailed uh, lab. So lab 2.2, uh, 2.3.8. So this is a document here. It tells you how to do that. Then you have several other labs. I think there are more than 13 number that will tell you actually how to navigate uh, into the device and of course do all of the things you need to do. So uh, if you're a student in South Tech Academy, you have access to most of these things, the instructions, the answer sheets and the rest. So you see, this is just how to configure from your PC, a laptop, a desktop PC, configure the switch using a console cable. So you see all of the steps by step action. See the instructions. The part one of this is uh, how do I access a Cisco switch using a serial console port? How do I display or configure basic settings? Then optional, how do I do that also using a mini USB? So this is the scenario. So various models of Cisco routers and switches are used in all types of uh, networks. Uh, these devices are managed using a console cable. So that's why you call them a managed switch or managed router. So those ones you can actually do a lot of configurations on, you could uh, tweak them, you call them managed switches and routers. Then the ones that is already pre-configured, most of them have a GUI, whatever, you can access them using maybe an IP address, maybe 1921, whatever. And you just, maybe through Wi-Fi or through cable, you configure them, you see a GUI, all of the settings and whatever. But those ones that you're going to access through CLI, most of them, you call them managed switch. Whereas the others, you call them um, unmanaged switch because it's already managed for you by the manufacturer. It can be a Cisco device, it can be any type of device. Uh, if you're in any of the Cisco uh, South Tech Academy, either in any of our offices or you're taking the course remote, you are, well, we will normally be using the Cisco uh, 2960 uh, uh, S series. That's what we have devices, uh, the devices we have in our offices. Then uh, you can also use this device if you're on packet tracer. If you're any remotely, you could also use that and run through all of these labs. Okay, uh, for the router, we'll be using a 1841 router and a 2960 router, whichever of them that you use is still going to have same results. So these are some of the required resources for that, this lab. This one of these, one of these, a PC uh, DB9, yes, that cable is a DB9 to RJ45. So DB9 is this guy. So DB9 is this guy. This guy, it has nine pins, then RJ45 is this other end. So this other, this end gets into your switch a router. This guy gets into your PC, right? But most of the times, this DB9 is only for older systems. So the only way you can connect it is that you will need an adapter. Let me see if I can get something. You will need a DB9 USB adapter. So you need an adapter. Yes, something like this. So the USB gets into your device. Exactly, this is it. This is it. So this gets into your PC. That's DB9 male gets into this female and the other end gets to the switch. It's as simple as that. Okay. So back to the labs. So then you have your mini USB cable to configure the uh, router via the USB console port if you use that particular option. So this is how you do it. So this to this, and you must power your suit. So all the instructions are here. Uh, we're gonna be looking at most of these labs later on, later on in the course. So how do you configure your clock? Once you connect it, if it loads, say show clock, it's gonna let you know, you could enable. Once you say enable, it then means you get into the privilege mode. So see, this is the um, execution mode, whereas this is the privilege mode. So you could go on and on, on and on, and you can make most of these configurations. 
So, but the purpose of this class now is to explain most of the concepts you need to understand. Then later on, we're going to run through the labs. So this is called the global configuration mode. This is the line configuration mode, and this is the interface configuration mode. You use this uh, once you just connect your switch. Once you say configure terminal or conf T or enable, you get into this interface. There are several things you could do through this interface. Then let's assume you want to configure a particular interface. Let's say a device can have 48 ports or 24 ports. So if you want to configure one interface, right, or a VLAN or something, then that is an interface. Then you have to get into that particular interface before you now start configuring it. Let's say you want to say that particular port can only have access to a particular IP address or whatever. Maybe the PC that's going to be connected to that port. Let's say that's port one. So that is your interface configuration mode. So your interface is going to look something like this. So there's a short video in your Cisco LMS that explain most of these concepts about the user interface, the privilege, and the global configuration mode. So that's it. So you have some sub configuration modes. So there's a video that in your Cisco LMS that tells you how to enable, how to disable, how to configure, how to exit, how to end, how to do control Z on your keyboard, and some very, very basic commands. So the command structure. So Let's examine this uh, iOS command structure. So this is my switch. So you're on prompt. What's the command you're running? You can be running a ping. Uh, you normally have a space. You don't just type uh, ping an IP address. You will always want to leave a space. So we're telling you how do you run commands. So uh, you just say ping this. So the structure is the prompt, the command. You leave a space, then your argument or your, your keyword. So command syntax check. The command right might require one or more arguments. Yes. So imagine if you are trying to ping, if you are trying to do a ping sweep. I'm trying to pick between an IP address to certain IP address. So you need to do a dash, you put the second IP address. So and a command can take more than one argument, right? You should be aware of that. Then uh, look at this command ping, IP address. So what a ping does is an ICMP command, though there's a module that has to do with uh, ICMP, uh, where we're going to be looking at several commands, Internet Control Messaging Protocol commands. Uh, I, I think it's one of them, uh, trace root, trace out, um, and so many others. So if the command is complex with multiple arguments, you may see it interpreted or represented like this. You say switch port this, 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 static this, this, this. So the point is that you could have more than one uh, uh, command. In the course of the, this training, in all of the modules, for every command you're going to do and how you're going to do that, we're all going to explain everything. So just take it little by little. You're going to catch up everything. So there are some help features. Just like in your window interface, uh, you could do a, a, a question mark and hit enter. It's going to tell you all of the, all of the possible commands. You can also type a a, 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 a command or a, a switch and put a question mark, it's not going to tell you different options for that. Take, for instance, your, your uh, router normal execution mode and you say pink question mark. It's going to give you what's possible. Ping word, ping IP, uh, ping uh, IP version six, to give all of the options. And that's one way you can also learn right on the command prompt. So there's a video that does some of this explanation on your Cisco LMS. So please check that up. It's going to add up to what you learn and how you learn. So there are some shortcuts. Instead of me saying configure terminal in full, I could say conf T, 
right? So when we get to start doing the labs, you're gonna see that if I'm typing at times, I might be using some of the commands uh, in short forms. So this is it right here. So ConfT is a short form for configure terminal. So what does a tab does, uh, or what does it do? It completes a partial command entry. For instance, if I say conf and I hit my tab, most likely it's going to give me all of the other options I have to complete that particular command. The backspace, what does it do? Left arrow, right arrow, up arrow, right? Just like a normal Windows command, uh, how you use your keyboard to go back to previous commands you've done, uh, come to the commands you've done after that. And of course, a left arrow to move your cursor either back or front. Okay, just normally shortcuts, basic shortcuts, uh, shortcuts. Okay, there's a lab there. Uh, we're going to do all of these labs later on. And that's the lab, the document I just opened to you. That is, uh, should be uh, lab, lab uh, two points, lab two point, um, 2.3.8, right? Navigate the iOS by us using Teratem, right? So this particular lab. So that is what you you're supposed to be doing. Uh, at this moment. So, but we will take through all of the content of the training, lay all of the foundation, then we'll let her now run through the labs. Okay, so basic divide configuration. So, like I said earlier on, once you get into your switch environment, you want to say configure terminal. I could say configure, uh, then you say host name, SW switch floor one. So. You say host name and the name. So you are trying to say this guy, this switch now, I want to give you the name SW that is switch in floor one. You could say host name Southtech. You could say host name your name or host name whatever. Depending on the topology that you've designed and planned earlier on. So once you do that, it gets into the uh, execution mode, but I get into the privilege mode, right? So to return the switch to the default prompt, use the no hostname global configuration command. So uh, this is about passwords. You might need to password your device. You have options not to. So if you have to password the device, what should you do? Uh, most of the labs in this course, if you are going to visit the packet tracer or if you have physical labs, for the fact that more than one students might be using uh, the devices, you might just use very plain, simple uh, passwords like Cisco or class. So they are considered weak, uh, but in, in a more enterprise environment, you want to have combination of upper and lower case and, and the rest. Because in the lab documents, you're going to see uh, different um, uh, uh, the, the instructions telling you the type of password to use or the password that has already been used, how to access them and the rest. But in real environment, you want to use something very uh, hard to guess. So how do you configure password? Simply you say, once you get into uh, the switch, you've already said, the first thing you do, you say configure terminal, you say host name, give it a name. The next thing you want to do now is to say a configure terminal line console zero. Then you give it a password, Cisco, you log in, you end, right? So if you want to also secure the privilege mode, same thing, configure terminal, enable secret class, you exit. Subsequently, when you will need to access this particular switch, you must enter that password. If you don't enter the password, you're unable to have access to it. And for VTY lines, there are like different kind of access to control your Cisco switches or Cisco devices. So it's normally 16 lines. 
So, but if you start counting from zero, you have zero, one to 15, making 16. So you could dedicate different lines for different persons within your organization. You could say from zero to five is for my IT staff, from six to seven is for maybe the boss, from so and so, whatever. So you could configure or you could configure all the lines and tie them into one place. Many Cisco switches support up to 16 VTY lines, uh, but you number them from zero to 15. So you could decide to also encrypt the password. So this is how you do it, configure terminal, service, password, encryption, exit, right? Um, you do the show running config. You're, we're going to be doing show running config, especially in the labs. This particular module is very, very lab based. So you have, about um, one lab, two labs. You have two labs on the module two. So we're going to be running them later on. So there are quite a lot of labs here. So it's good to understand the foundation, have the explainer for them. Then at the end of the course, we move out to the labs. Okay. So banner messages, if you want to, add some message that it will be presented to your switch users. You could do that. You could just say configure terminal banner, uh, MOTD authorized access only, right? Then anytime somebody gets to that uh, terminal, it's going to tell him authorized access only. That's the message you've added. There's going to ask the person for the password he just configured earlier on. So there's a video on your Cisco LMS. You can watch it to tell you how to do most of these things we've done earlier on, but later on in the course, we're going to look at those labs. So, but if you have access to the Cisco LMS, get to this section of the material and watch through all of this. How do you save configurations? Make sure that when you, when you uh, do most of the configurations we've talked, uh, talked about earlier on, you save them. And for switches, they have their um, um, RAM, like the um, memory storage within them. For routers, most of the time, they have this uh, SD card uh, that is detachable, detachable. So that's where they're going to store most of those uh, information. So there are two system files that store the configuration, uh, device configuration. It can be the startup config or the running config, right? Those are those two guys. Setup config is going to have all of the information of the system. Uh, most of the times it's volatile. Uh, if anything happens, it can, it, it's, always, it's always there, right? So it contains all of the commands that will be used by device to start up. So it's, it's always there. The whereas the chronic config, it's stored in RAM. So it's volatile. It loses all of its content when the device is powered off and restarted. So to save changes made in the running configuration, set up configuration, you have to do copy running config, start up config privilege mode, and you do that in the privilege uh, 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 mode. So what happens is that wherever you have saved your running config, you have stored. Take for instance, if you do VLANs, if you do access control, if you if you name a switch, if you do all of those stuff, you want to make sure that you save it. If you don't save it, when you restart that particular switch or router, all of that is going to be gone. So uh, if changes made to the running config do not have the effect and the running config has not been saved, you can restore device to the previous configurations. Uh, later on, I'm going to publish uh, something that will help you either in the training group or maybe on YouTube how you could either reset or reformat or especially if you are using a switch that is being used by somebody else you want to just like start from erase everything and start from ground zero or share documents and links on how to do that either on the website blog or i'll do a video just for that so there's a video here in your lms how to alter config uh, uh running configurations uh 
configure a uh, capture configuration to a text file. So if everything you've done, you want to save it. So you could just go to your putty, click on login, all sessions, output, give it a name and you open. So these are the steps, open terminal emulation software. It can be putty, it can be Teratem, it can be anything. Make sure it's already connected. So you enable login, then you um, use, indicate all session output, that's this guy here. Then you give it a name. Then you execute show running config or show setup config on your switch while this is being, while you've done this already. Then you disable login in the terminal software. The figure shows how to disable the login by choosing the non session. This note, the text file created can be used as a record of how the device is currently implemented. The file could configure could require editing before being used to restore to a saved configuration of a device. Take for instance, for instance, if in learning purposes, you might have some configurations you want to use to train other students. You could do this and save all of the configurations. So whatever it is wiped out, you could use it to do some explainer. Or if you have some configurations for a particular uh, IT infrastructure, you've configured some, some, some items, then you might need to do this to save all of the things you've had then so that you can always restore later on. Uh, packet tracer. So there's a packet tracer lab. I think that is the second lab in this course. That is a uh, lab 291, basic switch and end device configuration. So this is all you have there in that lab. We'll consider that later on. So ports and addresses. So you have IP addresses. So why do you need IP addresses? You need IP addresses so that you can communicate. That's why it's called an address. If nobody knows your office address, the person wouldn't know how to get to you. If somebody doesn't know your house address, the person wouldn't know how to get to you. So there are several types of addresses we have over the internet. So you can have web address, you can have IP address, you can have um, a loop back address, you could have several kinds of means of identification. Even for every web address, always maps back to an IP address. That's why you, when you go to your command prompt and ping southtechventures.com, for instance, it, it gives you an IP address, right? So the use of IP address is the primary means of enabling device to locate one another and establish end-to-end -end communication. So the structure of an IP address is called dotted decimal notation. We're going to be doing some maths later on in the course. So it's from zero to 255. So Understand that IP version 4 is 32 bits, IP version 6 is 128 bits. MAC address is also another type of address, right? It's always 48 bits. IP version 4, 32 bits, IP version 6, 128 bits, IP uh, MAC address uh, 48 bits. So this is what your IP version 4 address looks like. Just uh, four units of uh, separated by a dot, having three figures maximum. So the IP version six, like I said earlier on, is 128 bits in length. And this is how it looks like. Later on, we're going to see how to do compressed version of IP version six and the rest. Uh, and also, we're going to be considering the different uh, type of IP address and why we need them and what is the advantages, what are the disadvantages also. Interface and ports. So for each guy you see here, it's called an interface. For each guy, at times you call it a port. For each guy, it's an interface. For each guy here, it's an interface. Right, the medium, the media through which you're going to be transferring and connecting from this interface, from this interface to another interface, it's all of these guys, the copper cable, the fiber optics cable, or through infrared, through wireless, through whatever. 
So configuring IP addresses. So two ways, you could use static, you could use DHCP. So it could be manual, it could be dynamic. So this is actually manual. When you are imputing the IP address yourself and you want the guy to communicate through the IP address you have provided. If you, if you say obtain IP address automatically, then it's going to be using the DHCP. DHCP, the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. We'll talk about this later on in the course. This is more or less like an introduction. I uh, will talk about it more when we look at uh, ARP, Address Resolution Protocol, so you understand how these devices communicate, how IP addresses are generated. And if you are taking a server security course, I, it, it's going to make a lot of sense because at times when you're trying to trace a particular device, you're trying to trace a particular person, most of the times they are all IP bound. So this way, it's going to be using DHCP, but because you're trying to take up IP address from the DHCP server automatically. So to assess a switch remotely, then of course, that switch has to be over the internet. Then a few things you want to do is that an IP address and a subnet max must be configured on the SV1, right? You have several virtual interfaces, right? So you will need to configure one interface so that you can communicate from you can communicate or get to that particular switch over the internet i have an internet i have a switch here i want to uh not just until i am with the switch be able to configure it like we've looked earlier on with the um console cable but i want to be able to configure that switch when i am away from that environment it then means that switch has to be on the internet that I have to configure a subnet max to do that. So this how to do that. So configure terminal interface VLAN one. It then means that you you have to configure. And by default, most of the times VLAN one is the default. You can't actually tamper with that. You can't actually change that. So uh, if you want to create VLAN VLANs, you cannot create additional VLANs. We'll learn how to do that uh, subsequently because. This course is ITN one. So there are some things that we restrict ourselves to so that we'll fully grab them. So that things that are, uh, are we're going to be considering in CCNA two, which is routing, switching, wireless essentials. You see, you're seeing routing and switching. So you have more details there, how to create all of those VLANs, how to do all of those configurations. You have that in that version two of the CCNA levels. Then in version three, that's where we have enterprise networking security and automation so we call that ENSA. so with that that sums up the entire ccna uh, program so implementing basic connectivity i just want to be able to connect or establish that i can connect to a device that's where icmp comes in internet control messaging protocol so there are several of them you have ping you have trace route uh, trace route, you have Tracer, you have uh, what again? Quite a lot of them. So, how do you do that? There's a video there on your LMS. You could look that up. There's a lab we're going to look at later on. There's also another lab on setting up topology. We'll look at that later on. Quite some things we've learned. So if I want to establish connectivity, very, very uh, basic things I could do. Very, very basic things I can do. All I just need to do is I just change directory to my whatever. So if I ping southtechventures.com, I'm trying to establish connectivity to this particular domain. So you see, I have, uh, or I want to do IP config. If I do IP config, it's going to let me know what my, see, I have so many adapters on this uh, system. I have an ethernet adapter, which I'm connected to. I'm connected through a LAN cable. 
I have a virtual box for server security virtual machines. I have a Wi-Fi card. I have another LAN card. I have another LAN card. I have an ethernet adapter being used by VMware. I have uh, another one. So the one that makes sense to me is the very first one through which I'm connecting through to or through, which is this one. Uh, my IP version six address is this. My IP version four address is this. My subnet max is this. Uh, my default gateway is this. So I am connected through this, 192.168.8.1. It then means if I say 192.168.8.1, I'm going to get through to my default gateway. So this is the router through which I'm using to connect to my device. So you see, I'm a 4G network. There's two LANs connected to me, but this is, this is 192.168.8.1. So it then means every other system is going to pick from two up to 255, like we said earlier on. So this is 8.102. It then means this system is taking 102. So this is the IP version four address. So next time you're on a network, you want to know uh, what your IP address is or know your ISP or know what you are connected to. So you just run IP config. So all of these are uh, ways you could test for connectivity. You can also do trace at southtechventures.com for instance. So it's gonna let me know how many hops I have between my network and wherever, wherever the server is. So just give it some moment. It's going to go through my router, which is 192.168.8.1. It's going to go through all the different uh, hops up till when it's going to get to where this is being hosted. All of these are just examples through which you could text for connectivity. You want to know if you're active, see the next IP address is 10. This, so if I ask myself, uh, uh, what's it called? Who is .com. With who is .com, I can get to know this IP address. Where is it? This IP address is somewhere. Okay, Irene, 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 Irene should be Africa uh, registry. Okay, American registry of uh, internet numbers. So you see from here, go to this, then go to this. Then like that, go to this. So it's, it's trying to tell me all of the hops, all of the networks through which uh, where I am up to where that domain is hosted. Global com. Okay, so that's the network I am on. So I'm sure Global com have somewhere, this should be somewhere in Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, Next, what's the next IP address? Cloudfair, yes, this domain name is hosted on Cloudfair. So what's the IP address? Let's look, okay, let's check this particular IP address. Who owns this IP address? So he's just trying to show you all the routes. That's why he call it trace route. All the routes through which from my network here to where that particular domain is hosted. This is somewhere in Sweden. So it's going to be something like from point A well, up to point B. So, but what are all the different networks I'm getting to before I get to point B? That's what TraceApp does for you. So before you now get to 101.21.59.18. Later on in this course, we'll look at uh, more of these guys later on and see how we do that. What did we learn in this model? End devices require an operating system, which is the iOS in the labs. You're going to do more of this. Then the global configuration mode, the, the execution mode, are different modes depending on what you want to do. If you want to configure the terminal, if you want to configure the switch or the router, there's a mode you need to get into. Either the execution mode or the privilege mode. 
Then there are some basic configurations you can do on your router or switch, things like host name, give it a name, just enter into the normal mode and you say host name, give it a name. You could configure the password, you can encrypt your password. You could give a banner and say, okay, welcome to Southtech or say unauthorized access or welcome to Southtech, please put in your password. You could do all of that. Okay. There are some new terms that you have learned now. OS, command line interface, GUI, shell, kernel, hardware, console, and the rest of them. So look them up, read about them, go back to your LMS, do more readings if you have questions, make a comment uh, or comment in the training group. And I will very much uh, more, uh, I myself and the other trainers will very well attend to you. Thank you very much and see you in the module, next module. If you have a question, please ask, make sure you subscribe and share.